Welcome, you're watching part 5 of my series on HTML and CSS for beginners. My name's Kevin, and this week we're looking at creating links in our code, so let's hop to it! Links are what make the web... well, the web. It just wouldn't have worked if we couldn't link from one site to another, you know, what would be the point then? The whole idea behind HTML, you know, HT is hypertext and it's not normal text. It means we have hyperlinks and they link from one page to another or from different parts of a page, you know, from the top of a page we can link to lower down in the same page. Like paragraphs and headings, links have a tag and they're not the most intuitive tag because they're not really link tags, they're anchor tags. When you think of anchor though, it makes a lot of sense. It's an A tag, just like that, A and close a now why anchor tags well links used to work a little differently and the whole idea was to create anchor points throughout one document this let us link to the different parts on one page so you think of a scientific paper back in the day they'd make a page for it it'd be a really long article and you'd have a table of contents and you could click on the different section you wanted and it would just bring you there so we were anch we were creating anchors throughout the whole site and you could quickly access all those different places the anchor tag is stuck around even though the usage of it is a little bit different now and actually the original way it used to work it's not even supported anymore so let's say I, i've put in my a tag here but unlike all these other tags that we've looked at so far, an A tag by itself won't really do anything. You know, like here I have my, my P, close P, so I'm telling it that this is a paragraph. Or I have my strong, close strong, I'm telling it that that area is bold or has emphasis on it for my italic text. But an A tag all on its own, where do we want to link to? So we have to learn a little bit of new vocabulary for dealing with links, and that word is attribute. We're gonna see some other attributes as we go on, but for links, um, the most important one, and the only one we really need, is the href. So this, this link's not going anywhere, it's not really showing on my page, um, but I have to give it an href. So I'm gonna do href is equal to. And you can see my code editor has actually changed the color of that. Let's just take this out so we can see it all on one line, actually. Uh, don't like that. I'm just going to delete all of this actually. Let's start my link there so it's right at the top and easier for you to see and we don't need all these other things in here anymore. So let's save my file. Um, so we have my link right up here and uh, my href is, where is it going to? This stands for hypertext reference. So whenever I write an attribute, I'm sticking inside my normal, I'm inside the opening tag, I'm putting a space, and then I'm writing it. And you can actually see uh, most code editors will do this, where they'll try and you know, help you out. What are we doing? So the second I put a space, it's going to go and look for all the different attributes that I'm, I could actually put on this. And I want my href. Following the href is the equal sign. So my hypertext reference is equal to, and then in quotation marks, I'm going to put where I want this to go to. So for this demo, let's make it HTTP www.google.com. And now this link, let's save that. Let's refresh over here. And I can see, there we go. I have a nice link. It's made it blue. It's underlined it all by default. Now you'll notice that I put HTTP colon forward slash forward slash here. No one actually writes this when they're going to a website anymore. You know, if you're old enough to remember, you might have actually had to written this in the browser in the really old days. Uh, these days, everything is HTTP, so we never even write it. Um, most browsers won't even show that. Uh, we just see this part of it. But it's really important that we include the HTTP colon forward slash forward slash when we're making a link to a web page that's somewhere else. So let's just see. I'm going to click here and we'll see that I load up and there's Google. Awesome. So I'm going to go back and let's just take that HTTP out and show you what it does. I'm going to save and I'm going to refresh and I'm going to click on this and the file's not found. And if you come up and look in the address here, it's looking for it on my desktop in my first website folder that I created. And then it's looking for a file called www.google.com inside of there. And obviously that doesn't exist. Without the HTTP, it thinks it should be looking inside that site. So I'm going to undo, bring back my HTTP, save that. Let's go back, refresh, and try again. And now we can see it's actually working. 
Awesome. And what this is called is an absolute link. The path here is absolute. It's the exact address for google.com. By including the HTTP colon forward slash forward slash, we're telling the browser this is exactly where it needs to go. This is the exact address. It's the absolute path. If I want to link to another page on my site, though, then we can use something called a relative link or a relative path. So let's make a new file and I'm going to copy this. So let's just go copy, make a new file, paste all that in there. But all the way up the top, uh, I'm going to change this to say page two. You also notice that everything's in gray right now. So if you remember back to the second video in this series when I made our first page, and let's just change our title here too. Actually, it's not my first web page. This is page two. Um, you'll remember that when I did that one, um, we had to save our document and tell the browser it's an HTML file. Right now, my code editor, even though I have all this stuff up here, my code editor doesn't know this should be an HTML file. It's only going to know that once I go and I do my save. And let's just call this one page 2.html and hit save. Now my code editor knows it's an HTML file, so all the color coding comes back in here. Also, most code editors are going to use a tab system. So you can see up here I have my tabs. I'm going to click back on my indexed tab. And let's add a new link down right here. Uh, so A. And let's just make this page 2. Oops, sorry about that. Page 2. Close A. And then I'll come back into the opening. href is equal to. And in this case, I don't need an absolute path. I don't have my HTTP. I don't need to include all that. I'm inside of my folder already. So my index file is living in one place. Let's go take a look. Here we go. My index file is here. And I just want to switch from here over into this file. So because they're living and they're right next to each other, all I have to do is write the name of that file, page2.html. Get that out of the way. I'm going to save this, refresh over here, and my link is there. And if I click on it, I'm on page two. And if I push back, I go back to page one. Oh, this one's zoomed in. Let's reset. So just like when I took out the HTTP here when, with my Google link, when I clicked on that, it was looking inside of that original folder. And it was just going, it was replacing this with www.google.com, which didn't make any sense and didn't work. So when I include this, it knows it's looking for a web page somewhere else on the internet. It's not in my own files. It's not in my root folder. It's off somewhere else. If I don't include the HTTP colon forward slash forward slash like I haven't here, it just assumes that the file is inside of this folder and it's going to look for it right there. So again, this is an absolute link and this is a relative link. And by relative means it's relative to this. So I have my page two and boom, there's my page two and we can go right into that. We're going to see a lot more about relative and absolute paths also uh, in our next video where we're going to be looking at images because images, we also have to tell it where to find the picture. So that's it for links. And as you can now assume, the next video we're going to look at is putting some pictures in there and making things look a lot more fun since we can actually include some visuals. So I hope you like this video. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If you have any questions, any comments, leave them down below in the comments. And until next time, have a great day.